Fashion. It is an art. It's how one expresses themselves, and it's a way to show the world who you are and what you portray yourself as. You share your individuality through the clothes you wear, and some say that a person's sense of style defines who they are. A sin signals out to everyone, projecting the self-image one is trying to display. Style is a way to say who you are without having to speak. The U.S. apparel market alone is valued at approximately $292 billion. The fashion industry is one of the most competitive, and in this day and age, it continues to grow and grow. Social media has increased everyone's appetite for fashion. But step out of 2020 for a minute. Go back to about 1940 or so. The age after the Hollywood era and the time of glamour. The time of couture, class, and evening gowns. The 1940s were also a time where the world was at war, and the fashion industry seemed to come to a halt. Communication from Paris stopped, and fabric for clothing was being rationed. Many designers struggled and fell during this time, while others flourished. One of those flourishing designers, a pioneer of the American fashion industry and an Indiana native, was Norman Norell. Norman Norell was a designer who became resourceful with the clothing he made and created a name for American designers in the world of fashion. He broke through the barriers presented to both him and the fashion industry while the world was in distress to create a high-status fashion label that affected generations after him. In the 1930s, women looked to movie stars for fashion inspiration. Hollywood disseminated fashion. Simple lines during the beginning of the decade hugged curves and waistlines were natural. The Great Depression had a dramatic influence on fashion. The stock market crash caused hemlines to go back down to ankle length. By the end of the 1930s, Europe had entered the Second World War and the Great Depression still had its lasting effects in America. World War II started in 1939 and was fought between the Axis powers of Germany, Italy, and Japan and the Allied powers of Great Britain, the United States, Soviet Union, and France. The war began when dictator Adolf Hitler had Germany invade Poland. Great Britain and France responded by declaring war on Germany. While America didn't join the fight until December 8, 1941, the effect and fear spread throughout the entire world. Just as much of Europe, women's fashion was being dictated by Adolf Hitler. Fashion follows social trends and events of the world economy, so change brought upon by World War II was necessary in clothing styles and design. While it seemed that the American fashion industry was going to come to a pause, designers broke through the barriers. Norman Norell is one designer who will forever be known for his success in the fashion industry during the hardships of World War II. Norman Norell was born in Indiana. On April 20, 1900, Harry and Nettie Levinson welcomed to their family a son named Norman David Levinson. His draw to fashion and sense of style started at a young age. His mother's style of dress and large fashion magazine collection, along with his father's haberdashery store in Indianapolis, is where his early interest in clothes, interiors, and the theater was derived from. At the age of 18, he left the Hoosier State for New York City to attend Parsons School of Design to study fashion illustration. This was where he changed his name to be Norman Norell. He was said to have spent a year at the school and Parsons claimed him as one of their illustrious graduates. Norman came back to Indianapolis where he opened a batik shop. A year later, he returned to New York to continue his studies at the Pratt Institute. After his schooling, Norell dove into the fashion industry. In 1922, he started at Astoria Studios of Paramount Pictures. Here he designed costumes for Rudolph Valentino and the Sainted Devil and for Gloria Swanson and Zaza. Norell was known for his designs and women's clothing, and his work began to shift from costumes to evening gowns in 1924 when he was hired by Charles Amour. While working with Amour, he designed an upscale line of dresses. After four years with Amour in 1928, Norell left to work with Hattie Carnegie. Here he gained his experience in retail, wholesale, and custom fashion design. With Carnegie, Norell was able to study the construction of French couture dresses, travel to Europe, and work with glamorous clients. Norell worked with Carnegie for 12 years before he began to work with Anthony Trana. Norell said, Mr. Trana called me and asked me to join him. He offered me a larger salary if my name were not used, a smaller amount if it was. Norell chose recognition over the financial gain, and so in 1940, the brand Trana Norell was formed. Trina Norell was a high-end clothing manufacturer. The company produced dresses, suits, and evening wear. The design clothing which paralleled the couture of Paris. From the first collection, Norell established himself as a major new talent. In the October 1941 issue of Vogue, Bonwit Teller declared, The house of Trina Norell comes on the season like an electrical storm. Its designer, young Mr. Norell, creates a collection so alive that everyone's talking. 
the label created an American-made status symbol that would remain in closets for decades. While Norell and his label were very successful and high status, they were not excluded from the hardships that the Great Depression and World War II brought to the fashion industry, especially in the way that fabrics became limited. However, Norman Norell broke through the barriers and became resourceful and ingenious in the way that he created his clothing. Norell perfected the use of simpler fabrics in evening wear, especially jersey. This wasn't something that had been done or accepted before. Norell returned to his favorite period, which was the 1920s. He began designing slimmer dropped waist chemise dresses. Norell had a very minimalistic but dramatic approach. He felt that less was more and created simple necklines and slimming more body conscious designs. He perfected using materials that were not in demand by the military. For evening gowns, he became resourceful in using paillettes, a fabric which was freely available during World War II. With a limited amount of fabric allowed for clothing at the time of the war, the hemlines on dresses rose. Norell took advantage of this trend and used this classic look throughout his career most of his dresses being knee-length or calf-length. With the success of his company, other designers were encouraged to do original work, and 7th Avenue, as it is today, was formed. A large barrier that was put on the fashion industry during this era, besides the amount and type of fabric allowed for clothing, was the disconnect with Europe. American designers were always looking to Europe for inspiration in their designs. The high-status clothing in the United States was influenced by what the fashion industry overseas was producing. Norman Norell was one American designer who used this for the better. Once the international press coverage came to a halt, designers in America gained popularity. Norell gained a foothold on the international fashion scene. American designers showed that they could create innovative and original designs. This earned both Norell and America an important place in the fashion world. When it comes to the legacy of Norman Norell, he had great impacts on both his generation and generations after. During his time, Norell was known as a man of many talents. Some called him the American Balenciaga. The women who wore Norell's designs felt special and became sentimental of their dresses, rarely parting with their pieces and keeping them for decades. While the women who wore his clothing were wealthy and high status, Norell remained humble. He avoided the social world that his designs were correlated with. Just a few weeks before he died, Norell said, I never had the time to do the things a designer is supposed to do. I escaped that my whole life. When Norell was asked what he wanted to be remembered for, he simply said necklines. He believed that when he first began designing in the 1920s, the trick for a designer was to create a new neckline. Norell himself said, I hated fussy necklines. I always thought they made women look older, so I made a simple round neckline. I did believe that it changed the look of clothes. Norell is also remembered by his students as an excellent teacher. He taught at the Parsons School of Design. Right until the end of his life, Norell made visits to assist fashion students. In 1956, he was awarded a medal from Parsons for distinguished achievement. Teaching his craft was a passion of his, and students were eager to participate in his classes. One of his students said, I begged Ann Kigi, head of the fashion department, to please let me work with Mr. Norell since I loved his clothing so much. His status as a mentor in the fashion industry would be solidified when he established CFDA, the Council of Fashion Designers of America. His memory will live on in the CFDA, which helps emerging designers become the fashion innovators of tomorrow. He was the first designer to receive a Cody Award and to be inducted into the Cody Hall of Fame in 1956. In total, he received five Cody Awards. On October 25, 1972, Norell passed away. This was just before the Metropolitan Museum of New York was to give a retrospective exhibition of his work. After his death, his clothes have been featured in numerous exhibitions. In 1998, the exhibition simply titled Norman Norell opened at the Fashion Institute of Technology and in 2002 at the Wadsworth Anthenium titled Architects of American Fashion, Norman Norell and Pauline Trigore. Close to half a century after his death, Norell was honored at the museum at FIT's large-scale retrospective called Norell, Dean of American Fashion. Norell and his influence will forever be a part of the fashion industry. He was a legendary designer who has inspired designers from the past, the present, and in the years ahead. He gave America a name in the bustling world of fashion, essentially founding 7th Avenue for what it is today. He is known for his versatility and how well his clothing was made. He had great attention to detail and understood what women wanted in their clothing. Couture designer Ralph Rucci said, He gave American fashion a sophisticated point of view. At a time where the glamorous world of fashion was pushed aside for more pressing matters and great tension was present everywhere, Norman Norell broke through the barriers presented to both him and the fashion industry to create a high-status fashion label that affected generations after him. And for all of this, we have a small-town Hoosier to thank.